Hi, Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. For this video, I'm going to make these little vases. I had seen something like this done in a solid form before, but I thought I'd try it with segmentation and with two colors of wood involved. Uh, you'll see how I do it, but I think it has a nice effect because it has an inner form and an outer form that just change according to how you're looking at it. So uh, let's go ahead and turn these out of some walnut and some maple. To get started, I glued up 17 rings, 9 of maple and 8 of walnut. Due to the smaller diameter, I'm using 8 segments per ring, which works better at this size than my usual 12 segments. At this point, I have sanded all rings to a uniform thickness. Yes, they do look cleaner and slightly thinner. Now for some lathe work. I have a threaded wood face blade mounted on the spindle. I placed three small pieces of double stick tape around the face plate. Then a cone center on the tailstock centers the segment ring onto the face plate. With the cone center still in place, I can round off the circumference. If you have never turned a segmented turning, you should glue up a ring just to turn like this. Because once the points are off, I can get streams of wood off my tool from this dry wood just like someone with a big gouge on fresh wet wood. There is not alternating in grain side grain, only side grain. Segmented turning is wonderful. But then I drill a one inch hole through the center. Then since the rings are small diameter, I think splitting them on the bandsaw will work best for this project. While the rings are still stuck on the faceplate, I move the faceplate to the jig and saw off one slice. After sanding the fresh face on the thicker portion, I remounted the ring again to saw again so that most of the rings would be a uniform thickness. I made another wood faceplate to fit my threaded revolving live center. This one has a one inch spindle mounted that is long enough to hold one half of the rings, the walnut rings. I take a moment now to sketch my view of a small vase. The largest diameter is about two-thirds up from the bottom, the golden mean, approximately. Then off to carefully trim the rings. I do have to be careful with these thin rings since they are not glued together. Most of the time I use a shear cut. A heavy gouge cut would cause chip off the rings. But since this is all side grain, the wood streams off very nicely. Next, the maple rings, except that these will be the inside profile. I am concerned about the difference or how much the ring will or should be revealed. I guess I will find out with this first project. One thing to be sure of is to coordinate the size of the bottom and the top.
Since these rings will be tough to finish later, I'm sanding them now and spraying them with rattle can lacquer. Now I'm taking off that center spindle, almost a mandrel, out and shortening it so it only projects the width of one ring. This is so it can apply pressure later as I glue up the rings. Now I'm gluing the rings starting at the base. Spread a little glue, then clamp down with the mandrel. Not much glue since I do not want squeeze out. This is almost a rub joint. After clamping for a very short time with a live center, I start applying glue to the next ring. Then clamp it and start the next. Since the area is very small, I do not feel I need to leave it to cure under the clamp. This is more like a rub joint. The glue has grabbed, and since the area is small, no worries. Go on to the next one. That is enough now for the base half. Next, I'm starting again, but from the top side. I'm starting with a new ring and gluing it to a threaded waste block. While that glue sets a little, I can safely round off the circumference while the ring is held with live center pressure. That gives enough time for the glue to set enough to stick to the waste block while I face off the ring and drill out the center. Now glue on the rings from the top of the stack in quick succession. Now the top section is mounted and I'm expanding the hollow with a box scraper. and do the same with the bottom section. I'm worried about the two sections mating together properly. We'll see. And glue the top and bottom sections together. This I will let dry quite a while. Now it is time to complete the vase. The top and bottom are still mounted to their respective faceplates. The one on the tailstock is a threaded live center. But as I part off the top faceplate with the extra pressure, my waste block on the bottom portion split. I guess that is the last time I use construction fur for a waste block. This will require special attention off screen. Let us tackle the other vase to complete this video. After trimming the top ring a little bit, I part off the top faceplate, then shape the neck and the base before a thorough sanding.
After parting off the vase from the threaded base, I sand the bottom with a 2 inch sanding disc. With all those fins sticking out, I doubt I could finish this vase well with the spray lacquer I used earlier. Instead, I think I will get walnut oil into all those crevices. The walnut oil should not bother the lacquer I used on the center profile. The grain is popping out very nicely. However, wiping off the oil is a pain, but worth it. Well, they're done. And I like them. I think my experiment here was a success. I think there's some things I can do better the next time I do this. One is that uh, the alignment on my mandrel when I turned the smaller one and the outer one separately was a little bit loose and so I see some deviation of the center form because of that. I'd like a little more distinction between the center and the outer and I think if I change the order of things I could have uh, a dark with light and a light with dark base out of it too. So some things we can do better. My wife likes to look inside and see the alternating layers also. But uh, So they're success but yeah next time I'll do a little bit better. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new woodtoning video and add it to my website. As usual I appeal for you to wear your full face shield for safety anytime the lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video. Be wise in these COVID times. Try not to think about your problems. Instead, count your blessings and try to stay healthy.